Welcome back everyone to the channel and to this program and to this episode of your weekly stimulus update. On this episode, I'm going to go through a news article with you that does a really good job at giving all of the updated stimulus information. And I'm going to share with you a little bit of my insights on it. I don't want to diminish hopes, but I do want to give you reality. But at this point, this channel is almost moving into a bi-weekly stimulus update because the reality is, is there's not that much to share. I did take last week off, but Primarily, that was due to the fact that my wife and I, we just had a little baby girl that was introduced into our family. So what happened is a couple of weeks ago on Thursday, May 13th, I was outside with my son. It was about eight o'clock and all of a sudden my daughter came outside and said, mommy needs you. And I said, well, you know, what does mommy need? She goes, something about her water breaking. And I said, all right, here it is. So we went inside and her water did break at that point. And so we got everything together. We got all the kids stuff together. They went off with the grandparents and my wife and I drove out to the hospital and we stayed there. And of course, eventually uh, the labor really kicks in. And it was the next day at 1041 p.m., May 14th, that Ellie Olivia was introduced into our family. She did come 15 days early, so a little earlier than expected, but she was still eight pounds, 12 ounces, 15 days early. So she was, and she was great. I mean, the pregnancy went really well. Everything went excellent. Uh, our stay at the hospital was really good. And since that point, it's now been a week and three days or so that we've had her, and she is a really good little girl. She's very good eater, sleeper, uh, pooper and peer. She does a good job. So she does everything she's supposed to do. Uh, and she doesn't cry that much. So she's very well tempered and hopefully it stays that way. So that's really what went on. That's the reason I took the week off. But also I want to be honest with you. There's really not that, that much to share. I am always surprised. I mean, I still stay in the stimulus game. I look at all the stimulus news. I look at what Congress is doing. Uh, Joe Biden lawmakers, anything that's really interesting out there, I stay on top of, but it's not as interesting as a lot of individuals out there are making it to be with probably the two or three or four episodes they're putting out every single day. And I'm going to make a prediction that these individuals are going to continue to put two or three or four episodes out every single day in 2021. And by the time we reach the last day of this year, there will have been no fourth stimulus. And you can look back at their channel and see 300 episodes and never did you get a fourth stimulus because, in all honesty, they were really just manipulating the data to pull you along. And I have no problem. You know me. I've done stimulus here for a while. I have no problem with reporting stimulus news. But as long as there's something that's going to come out of it, if there's hope that is really genuinely at the end, if, if it can really happen, then there's no issue. Yeah, report it all day long, all the updates. But if it's really not going to happen and you're stringing people along, it's really not okay. And at the end of the day, to make themselves look a little bit better, they're going to blame everyone else. That's what they're going to do. Watch their channel. They're going to blame people with children. They're going to say the people who had children, they should have known how they shouldn't be getting it. They're going to blame the politicians. They're going to blame Democrats. They're going to blame Republicans. They're going to blame the president. They're going to say, don't vote for them. They're going to say that they're sick and tired. They're going to say that they didn't keep up to their promises. They're going to blame every other person in society, but they're not going to blame themselves. They're not going to tell you, to be honest with you, I kind of misled you. I strung you along a little bit and I told you that the percentage of getting a four stimulus was way higher than it really was. And so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to blame all the other people, but I'm not going to blame myself. And you know who should get the stimulus? They're probably going to put themselves in the category of that. So they might say senior citizens should get the stimulus, not these people. And what they're doing is they're just dividing and conquering. They're blaming certain subgroups and they're saying other subgroups should get it. And in all honesty, when they do it, it sounds good. But it's actually wrong, and it shouldn't be the way that they do it. In my opinion, I don't think they should be blaming any of the subgroups out of there. I do believe that there are people who still need stimulus. I really do. I don't think most of America needs stimulus right now. I'm going to be honest with you. Most people in the United States of America don't need stimulus right now. Matter of fact, at this point, I actually don't even think most people on social security, disability, or seniors need more stimulus. Now, before you hit the unlike button, just listen to me. I don't think you need more stimulus. I think you need the actual programs that you receive monthly benefits from to be reformed. 
Uh, I'm seeing inflation go through the roof night right now. I think that they need to start thinking much longer term than stimulus. Okay, so what if they send you another thousand dollar check or two thousand dollar check? You need. Uh, an increase in the social security that you're receiving. So I actually believe that you need a little bit more than a stimulus. I think that there needs to be a permanent increase and I'm not talking about going crazy. I know there's conservatives out there who would think like, listen, you know, we need to rein in the spending. I get that. But in all honesty, social security is not that much money. It really isn't. Neither is disability or any of these things. And we're reaching a point where things are, are starting to increase in price. And I do think that an increase um, might be necessary. And so that's what I really think needs to happen. Uh, more stimulus, not so much. That was necessary as like a shot in the arm when things were really bad. Now I think they need to move to a little bit more permanent. Um, I'm glad that they are doing the stimulus for the kids starting in July. So if you do have kids, um, as you claim them on your taxes, or even if you don't claim them on your taxes, if you received a stimulus check, you should start receiving money for them. I think that's a good thing. Don't listen to anyone out there who's telling you that it's not right that people with kids are getting these stimulus checks and other people aren't. It is good that the kids are getting stimulus stimulus checks. Um, and it's good that parents are getting them. Hopefully they use them correctly, but they do need to take care of other groups as well. We're not dividing and conquering here. So as I said, I wanted to bring you through this news article because it did a really good job in sort of summarizing all the stimulus news. And this is Yahoo Finance. You Again, this is the second time I'm using Yahoo. You wouldn't think that I would go to them, but you know what? If they give a good summary, they give a good summary. And here we see as recently as May 17th, six Democratic members of the influential House Ways and Means Committee sent a letter to Biden urging him for recurring direct payments tied to economic conditions. This is definitely some news you will be hearing from people out there. They'll be telling you, yes, they're sending letters to him and there's more representatives who are on board. Matter of fact, this is the actual letter right here and those are the representatives who signed it. So you can see uh, Jimmy Gomez, Gwen Moore, Donald S. Byer, Earl Blumenauer, Judy Chu, Jimmy Panetta, and Bradley S. Snyder. Those who want to introduce this to you as really good and substantial news will tell you that this brings it to 80 members of Congress who are now wanting more stimulus and sending these letters off to Biden. But the reality is, is it this is honestly, it is not that much. There are other bills and programs that have far more members of Congress behind them. I'm talking hundreds, 300, 400 people behind them, and they never get introduced to the floor. They never go anywhere. You're talking about a fourth stimulus that's backed by 80 people in Congress. This, in all, I, I have to be honest with you, somebody who's presenting this to you, like like we're moving places. They're letting Biden know. It's, it's not what it seems. And there are so many more people in Congress who are very disinterested in having a fourth stimulus check that it completely wipes out those individuals or so who just signed that, that brings it up to 80 individuals. There are moderate Democrats who do not want a forced stimulus check. When you look at the economy, the fact that it is starting to improve, the unemployment is starting to go down, there are job openings everywhere, and inflation is going up, which means more government spending actually will, will harm you more than it will help you, unless the, the spending goes directly to you and it offsets the inflation. There are individuals right now in Congress who want nothing to do with another four stimulus, maybe some very targeted stimulus, but not a stimulus check the likes of which we've seen before. Just one last bit on the article here. You can see even though President Biden hasn't said no to more stimulus checks, he seems much more interested in extending the temporary enhancements to the child tax credit, child care tax credit, and earned income tax credit that were part of the American Rescue Plan. The Yahoo article also does a good job in saying that the chances of actually getting a fourth stimulus check are extremely low, which surprises me too that there are people out there that are even telling you that there's a 95% chance that there's going to be a fourth stimulus check. 95% chance. Like, like it's almost a reality. Like I have a 95% chance that I'm going to go eat lunch within the next hour. I mean, but really, there is a 95% chance if I can get this video done and I can edit it and get up there. That's a pretty good chance. There's no 95% chance of another four. And again, I don't I do not do this to be negative. I'm saying this because I got to be honest with you guys. Joe Biden is not interested in this. He's not even interested in the student loan promise he made. He made a promise that he was going to wipe out $10,000 of student loan debt. He ain't even doing that. You have so many more Congress people who are against four stimulus than are actually for the fourth stimulus. You have them, they're lowering mask mandates now. 
the CDC came out and said, if you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask in, in these private businesses. Many of the states are wiping them out entirely, uh, maybe in some government facilities. Unemployment is going way down there. Like, I'm, try, I'm just trying to say data piece after data piece is not encouraging for a fourth stimulus check. They barely got the third stimulus check passed when things were a lot worse. They barely. Barely passed it. Barely. By the hair on their chinny chin chin, they barely passed it. Now things are all of a sudden actually getting better, are improving. Unemployment's getting better. Jobs are getting better. Stock market's getting better. A pandemic is getting better. Less people are being affected. More mandates are being removed. And now they're going to pass another one with inflation worries on the rise. Less people in favor for it, 95% chance. It's just, it's so fake. It's, it's, there's just nothing real to it. The, the only way that there's really going to be a forced stimulus check is if the pandemic gets worse. You have to almost will that this pandemic is going to get worse to get a forced stimulus check, which would be terrible. If in your heart you want this thing to get better, you want more people to get well, you want the numbers to go down, and you want this thing to disappear and continue on the trajectory that it's going, there is no real chance for a forced stimulus check unless this thing gets worse. That's the reality of it. So right now, if you asked me if there's going to be a forced stimulus check and I had to give you a percentage chance, um, I would say by the end of this year, by the end of December, the chance of a forced stimulus check, the likes of what we've seen in the past stimulus checks, is less than 1%. Less than 1%. And that's me giving it a little bit. It's probably even a percentage of a percent at this point. Um, and that's reality speaking. Uh, I know uh, individuals will tell you too, everyone's got an opinion. Vin's got an opinion. I got an opinion. It's just our opinions, but it's opinion based off of real data. Okay. Factual information. It's like a sportscaster, a really good sportscaster will take data from a team that's batting over 350 average. They have excellent starting pitchers. They're on a roll. They have 10 wins in a row, and they're facing a team that is struggling. They only have 300% win rate. They're batting under 200. They're taking data, and they're saying, this team is likely going to win. This team's likely going to lose. Is it possible that the other team could win? It's possible. But in this situation, the data is overwhelming for no for stimulus. Now, the good news is that there is more pressure rather than fourth stimulus checks. There's more pressure for targeted relief. So perhaps in the future, maybe they will move forward to increasing Social Security or disability. They're, they're not quite doing it right now, but that's more of a reality. If you want me to be honest with you, that has a better chance of happening under a Joe Biden administration than a forced stimulus check, which is actually would be actually better for you. If you're on social security or disability, an increase to your monthly payment would actually be far better than a stimulus because it's permanent. That has a better chance than a forced stimulus check. And that's not a lie. And that's a good thing. But are they actually working on that right now? No. But I could see them in the next four years maybe doing something, especially if inflation gets worse, because they're going to, I mean, there is, oh, there's inflationary increases that occur every year, but maybe, you know, it'll get to the point where it's so bad. They'll say, no, we really need to step this money up a little bit here. We'll see. We'll keep our eye on that. And they are giving out targeted stimulus to parents uh, with children between the ages of zero and 17, which is good. And they may pass a more very targeted stimulus, but nothing like the like we've seen before. So uh, just sharing that insight with you. Thank you for all coming along with me. I'll try to continue to do these weekly or biweekly stimulus updates. Uh, not that you would lose heart, but that at least if you're going and you're searching around other sources, that every once in a while you'll just check in and you'll say, does Vin have anything different this year? I already know what he kind of thinks about the stimulus, but maybe if, if Vin comes in and you know if I come in here and I tell you that a forced stimulus is looking a lot more likely, it's not going to be the 87 videos that you saw from these other channels telling you this for the last three months. It's going to be me saying it for the first time, which means something because I'm not crying wolf. I'm not saying it every single day. I'm going to only tell you when it's, when it's actually real, 
when it's a reality. So I hope you guys appreciate that. I know that that's not always good for the numbers or the views. I, I totally get that, but uh, much rather be honest with you. And I do always appreciate the comments. By the way, best news yet, though, we got a new little nugget in the family, born May 14th, which is really cool uh, and really excited about that. So we're looking forward to the summer, uh, just spending time with each other and just enjoying that. Enjoy the rest of your day. I hope you have a good one. I will catch you next time for the weekly stimulus update.